welcome back to Dead Dad's Kitchen. My name's Irene Walton. If you are new to the show, my dad taught me how to cook and instilled a love of food in me. And then unfortunately, when I was 17 years old, he did die very suddenly. And now it is my job to instill that love of cooking in you. But it's funny. Well, they say he's not coming back and nothing can fill the void, but at least we can try with food. I'll make some apple pie. Come on in. It's Dead Dad's Kitchen. Mike Birbiglia has this great bit where he'll always go, stay with me <laughs> when he says something hilarious and terrible. So this is my stay with me. We're going to make the best Caesar salad that you have ever had today. So easy to make at home. There are a million ways you can change it if you don't feel like doing a certain part of it. It's gonna be so fun. I can't wait to show you. Come on in. So there are going to be four main parts of this Caesar salad today. The lettuce, which is just a romaine lettuce. I just got these romaine hearts from Trader Joe's. Our second part is the dressing, which is arguably the most important part of a Caesar salad. The third is the chicken that we're gonna be adding in. If you don't eat chicken or you don't eat meat, you do not have to add it in at all. This can just be a delicious veggie Caesar salad. And the fourth, which is arguably as important, well, Maybe it's like not as important as the dressing, but it's more important than the chicken. My special breadcrumbs. So my list is not in order of importance. It's just in order of the way I remembered what we are doing today. We're gonna have such a good time. I'm going to start preheating my oven right now. We're gonna put it to 400 degrees because the first thing we're going to make are our breadcrumbs so that they can start cooling down. But the first thing we're going to prepare is our chicken because we want that to marinate for a little bit. So let's get started with that. I am going to be using a plastic cutting board for my chicken. If you guys don't know, chicken is just riddled with pathogens that if they don't get cooked, they can be very, very dangerous for you. And a plastic cutting board is not going to absorb any of those pathogens like a wooden cutting board might. It's going to be a lot easier to clean, a lot easier to manage. So I always use plastic when I'm working with pretty much any meat. I just think that's a lot safer. Also, when you are using a cutting board that could like be slipping and sliding around, you wanna take a little paper towel, dampen it, and then just right on where you're gonna have your cutting board, put it there. And look, all of a sudden it's not moving around nearly as much. I am using chicken thighs. I am a firm believer in chicken thighs. I truly think that they are the tastiest part of the chicken. I think that white meat is like fine, but you have to work so much harder to get it juicy and sexy and fun. Chicken thighs, it's just like that already. So we're gonna open this bad boy up. And again, you guys, chicken is basically poison. The least amount of cross-contamination possible is always best. So I'm going to put this immediately just right down, taking this and tossing it right away. Now, while I have clean, fresh hands, I just washed my hands, I'm gonna get all of the seasoning that I'm going to use for my chicken. This is not super specific to the Caesar salad. This is just what I like to season my chicken with. I always use the Don Sasson, Don Sasson, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's, <laughs> it's my best friend's boyfriend. Well, he's my friend too. It's my friend Victor's. Family's company and it is truly the best chicken seasoning I've ever used in my life. It's literally just called chicken seasoning and that's how I knew it was gonna be good. So I'll use that as like a main seasoning and then whatever I have in my fridge, I or in my gorgeous little spice cabinet. If you guys didn't know I had a whole spice cabinet organizational video. Whatever I have in here that I wanna use, I will throw in as well. And I'm getting these while my hands are nice and clean. I don't have chicken on them. So in addition to my chicken seasoning, I'm just using some paprika, some cumin, some garlic powder, and some chipotle powder. If this is your first time making chicken and you're like, I didn't know it was so like, scary to use and da, da da I'm not saying that to scare you. And I'm not trying to like be like, oh, you should know that it has a bunch of pathogens in it. There's no way you would know that and that's okay. I am here to teach you how to properly use it. So don't let this scare you. It's perfectly fine as long as we are safe and clean and cleaning things up after, we're gonna be great. Don't worry. So these are already skinless chicken thighs. I honestly wanted to get skin on chicken thighs because you can make the skin super nice and crispy. But all I'm gonna do is there are some, here, let's make such a big fuss about not touching anything and then immediately touch my camera. There's just like some little bits of fat, 
some little trimmings that I wanna get off of this chicken and that's why I brought it to my cutting board. So I'm just gonna cut off the little pieces that I don't want because I wanna be working with as clean of a piece of chicken as I can. And I'm going to do that with all five of the chicken thighs I have and then I'm going to add it to a prepared baking dish. It's just a glass baking dish with some foil and some parchment so I don't have to do too much cleanup later. So we have our chicken in our prepared baking dish. We have not seasoned it yet. We are just, ugh, let's not, let's not repeat the Pyrex chicken incident. So, where's my salt and pepper? Oh. So one of my favorite tricks for making chicken, if you guys are new to cooking, new to chicken, new to preparing meat, I have my oven preheated, like I said, to 400 for the breadcrumbs. That's also what I'm gonna be baking my chicken at. Baking your chicken is a pretty surefire way that you're gonna cook it all the way through. It's gonna stay nice and juicy. A lot of the times when you cook it on a skillet, it can lose a lot of its juice. It can lose a lot of the moisture. The oven kind of keeps it in there. And the other trick I'm gonna teach you, if you guys don't already know this, using a plain, 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 not vanilla, but plain, like the one that tastes like shit, Using a plain yogurt, I'm gonna take just whatever's left in here and I'm gonna add it to my chicken. It is such a freaking hack, I can't even tell you. So there's just a bunch of yogurt on this chicken now. It looks crazy. I know, but we're also gonna add our seasonings in, okay? I'm gonna add a bunch of the chicken seasoning. This looks like one of those stupid fucking TikTok things where they put like uncooked pasta, a block of Velveeta, and a block of cream cheese, and a bunch of weird shit in it. That's not what this is. This is just so I don't have to keep retouching the chicken. A little chipotle for a little bit of spice. And of course, just some plain salt and pepper. I would absolutely advise that you use gloves for this. You could use tongs for this. Firm believer that some of the best tools we have in the kitchen are just our nice clean hands. I'm just gonna take this seasoning and I'm going to rub it all over my chicken. And here's the thing, because yogurt, Greek yogurt is acidic, it's going to help penetrate the actual meat of the chicken and get those seasonings in there, which is so, Freaking cool. And it's going to be a barrier to not let all of the moisture out of our chicken. This is a pretty common Middle Eastern way to prepare chicken. I know when I was growing up, I had some Armenian friends, some Lebanese friends. This was not uncommon at all to use yogurt. So this isn't like, you know, just some new hack I saw. <laughs> like I know it's been around for a very long time. So I'm literally just like making these pieces of chicken kiss to make sure everything is coated, giving everything some room. I probably could have used a bigger container, but like I don't have one. So, well I do, but I didn't prepare it. So if this breaks, I will die. So we have our gorgeous like seasoned coated chicken. We're gonna let this vibe out covered for like 30 minutes, pretty much however long it takes us to make these breadcrumbs. So we're just gonna put our chicken off to the side and wait for these breadcrumbs to be all done. Now you're probably like, you keep saying breadcrumbs, don't you mean croutons? No, I do not. Time for breadcrumbs. So the only thing I have not shown you is this garlic comfy. <laughs> Garlic confit is just garlic that has been cooked in fat. Confit means anything that has been cooked in fat. You can have duck confit, which is like duck breast, which is cooked in duck fat, and it's just gorgeous. Here's, here's what confit does. Here, this is a piece of garlic. Was that gross? I don't know. You take a oven safe little pot. You could do a little La Crusade. You could, this is not a La Crusade, this was $5 from Target. I took this little, <laughs> uh, this little like cast iron Dutch oven I have. You take a bunch of peeled garlic. This is the only time I buy pre-peeled garlic just because it's kind of a mess to do it otherwise. You take a bunch of peeled garlic, put it in the bottom, cover it with olive oil. You put it in a 250 degree oven for like an hour, hour and a half. And then at the end of it, you don't only have your garlic confit, you also have, can you see this? Garlic oil. I would bathe in this, I would, take a shower in this. I would wear this as a scent. I love it so much. So I use this obviously for my focaccia. I use this uh, for dressings, which we're gonna be doing today. The only, I just didn't show you because it takes so long and it's super self-explanatory. Uh, you literally just throw garlic and oil in an oven safe dish, pop it in the oven, and then you're done. So we're gonna be using this in a couple of different scenarios today. Our first one is the breadcrumbs. I think breadcrumbs are better for Caesar salad. I'm sorry, everybody, but I do. I like them better because you guys know I hate 
Anything that is not like a chopped salad size. Now, when I'm eating a beautiful Caesar salad at a fun restaurant and there's a hunk of crouton, sure. But you only get like 12 croutons for a salad. So how are you supposed to break that up yourself? When you get, I am so passionate about this. When you make your own breadcrumbs, they're not like breadcrumbs. They're like big-ish breadcrumbs that just give you this beautiful like crunch and flavor filled bite every time instead of having to like delegate when you're allowed to eat the crouton. I'm sorry. What I've done is I've just taken this like two day old baguette that I have and I've sliced it relatively thick. You see? I'm gonna take just some plain olive oil. I'm gonna bing, ding, 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 just all over. So you guys can see, I didn't drench them. I just kind of drizzled. Now I'm going to cover the other side as well. So now I have six chunky boys of bread that's coated in olive oil. Fantastic. What we're gonna do next is take just a little bit of salt and sprinkle that over. Now, why are you seasoning just plain bread? Because these are gonna be our breadcrumbs. And while we are gonna toss them with some more seasoning, it never hurts to season as you go so that you're not having to like throw a bunch of salt in at the end and try to overcompensate. If you season as you go, you're just gonna be in a much better spot. We've got salt and pepper and olive oil on our bread thus far. What I'm gonna do now is completely optional. If you guys do not have the garlic confit, that is a-okay. Just, to, just I'm gonna take one big clove and just squish it on some of these uh, crostini. If you guys have plain garlic, absolutely take a clove of plain garlic and rub it on here. That would be beautiful too. That's just gonna give it a different type of flavor. And this is just an extra step. It's just a silly little extra step. So this is what we're working with right now. And again, if you guys do not wanna do this and you have a bag of croutons that you've been waiting to use, use those, fantastic. Don't let that go to waste. This is just an extra little step. This is my favorite way to make this salad. You could just to toast these up and serve these on the side of the salad and not, not blend them or crush them at all. And it would also be delicious. As we let these little pieces of bread kind of crust up and crunch up, we are going to get started on the rest of our Caesar because all we have left is the lettuce and the dressing. Okay, so I've just taken these little crostini from the oven and I am flipping them so that we get a nice even char, not char, well, not char, but we get a nice even brown on all, both sides. Now, this is not brown enough. We are still gonna keep these in here for a few more minutes. Probably somewhere in the 10 range. Probably been in there for about 10 minutes. So now we are going to start working on our dressing. And you guys, there's a secret ingredient in the dressing. You probably know what it is. This Caesar dressing uses mayonnaise. Shut up, shut up. Here's the thing. Some people, not me, some people are not super comfy with raw egg yolk. Some people do not like anchovy. Those are two very common, super traditional ways to make Caesar dressing. Caesar dressing is just an emulsion anyway. An emulsion is combining fat molecules with water molecules, and that's what mayonnaise is. So while mayonnaise does have eggs in it, some people are just a little finicky about raw eggs, and that's a-okay. I am just making a smaller Caesar today. This is just for me, but we, you can double, triple, quadruple this dressing recipe. And this would also be great for like a chicken Caesar wrap, like whatever. Oh, there we go. All right, this is, now I know everyone's gonna make fun of me. <laughs> My mayonnaise farted. So for just me, I'm starting with maybe like two, three tablespoons of mayo. To that, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of mustard. If you would like a little bit of a spicier Caesar with like a little more zing, you can add a crushed clove or a grated clove, grated clove, grated clove, a grated clove of raw garlic. What I'm going to do, I love, I am a garlic ass bitch. You guys know that. So I'm adding three or five cloves of garlic confit. Now I'm just gonna mash these a little bit first so that it's not too hard to break up when I'm mashing this all together. It's not the end of the world if you forget to do this. I just like to do it so that it's kind of pre-mashed and it's easier to incorporate. But it's, it's they've, you know, they're not gonna incorporate all the way and that's fine. So we've got some garlic, we've got some mustard, we've got some mayo. I'm gonna give this just a little cursory mix to start incorporating stuff. Look at that, oh my gosh, so easy. I'm also going to add in some of that beautiful garlic oil that we made. You can just use normal, regular olive oil. We're going to add some lemon. 
I'd say like half a teaspoon. Let's just give that a whisk, see how that feels. Wow, lemon is a great way to figure out if you have a cut on your finger. Tell you what. So just mixing that together. And again, that loosens it. That makes it so it's gonna be way nicer, easier to coat our little lettuce leaves. Okay, so I'm really liking the consistency here. Now what I'm gonna do is add two little dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Bam, bam. This is also another very like classic Caesar ingredient. I made a slight error. <laughs> there is so much sugar content in the garlic confit that it, it um, caramelizes a lot. I should have put that on the bottom. Like I shouldn't have put it on the bottom piece because it sort of burned onto there. But any big pieces that burned on, I just sort of scraped off and it'll be fine. So don't worry, but we are taking out our breadcrumbs because they're, oh, nice and hard. <laughs> And those will be perfect. Those will be super crunchy and delish. So what we're gonna do now is put in our chicken. So into that 400 degree oven is going to go the chicken that we've been marinating for like 30-ish, 40-ish minutes. And that will start to cook. Back to our dressing. We're gonna let those uh, croutons, crostini, whatever you wanna call it, cool down for just a little bit. Wow, it tastes great, okay. But definitely needs salt, definitely needs pepper. I am somebody who firmly believes that a Caesar salad is very, very peppery. And since there is some salt content in that mayo and in that mustard just existing in there already, I'm not gonna add too much. I really, really believe that freshly ground black pepper actually does make a huge difference. And one of these like little pre-made grinders is like, I think this is three or four dollars at Trader Joe's. And one of these lasts me maybe seven months, honestly, and I use it very regularly. So it's definitely worth the investment. See, look how Caesar-y this dressing is. The last thing we're adding directly to our dressing is some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. This is also gonna up the salt content. That's why you don't wanna add too much in there right away. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Now let's make sure. Ooh, that's zingy. It's zesty, it's delicious. A little smoky, it's a little earthy. Perfect. I'm going to put this whole bowl in the fridge. Since it is just little me today and this is gonna be my whole lunch, I am gonna use this whole head of romaine. I'm just gonna quickly check the leaves. Even the outside leaves seem totally fine right now. So what I'm gonna do is chop off this bottom piece. I know, you're like, Irene, you have not washed this lettuce yet. I know I haven't. And I'm also just gonna chop off the top, like sort of wilty little bits of the leaves. With this whole head of romaine, I'm gonna cut it into quarters, the whole thing, just trying to keep it together as intact as possible. Then what you're gonna do is just give nice, little bite-sized slices. Okay, Gorge, got this whole head of romaine. We have a nice clean bowl. We are going to fill this bowl with water, just a little. We're gonna add our romaine in. Now fill this again. Agitate this romaine, okay? By agitate, I just mean get your hands in there. Because romaine, as you guys can see, is this really tall, leafy vegetable and it grows right up out of the ground. So they do a great job of washing it most of the time, but it's good to just get in there, double check that there's no bugs, no sand, no anything like that. Now with the lid of this bowl, I'm gonna leave just a little bit open and pour that water out. So now we have this nice romaine. I'm gonna do that again, except this time. This time I'm adding some ice and I'm gonna add the water again. And I'm gonna let this sit there for just a little bit and sort of like let some sediment fall to the bottom if it needs to, whatever it needs to do. That's gonna chill there, but we know it's not gonna wilt because it has that ice in the water. Now, if you have a salad spinner, Cheers to you, my friend. That's awesome. I don't have one. That, that would be a great little item to have, but alas. Now all we need to do is let our chicken finish cooking, let our sediment drop to the bottom, and now we're going to finish our little breadcrumbs. As you can maybe see, I've gotten out my food processor. If you don't have a food processor, that is no problem at all. We're going to take our Gorgina little crustina and put them in our food processor. These are nice and, I wanted to wait just a couple minutes for them to cool down a little bit. So here, my friends, is the magic. Do you see how there's a bunch of different sizes in there? That's what makes these so special. That's why it's so much more fun, I think, to do breadcrumbs and croutons, because look at this. You're gonna have some of this in every bite. But then every once in a while, you're gonna get, you're gonna get that bad boy. And that's why we make them so thick when we put them in the oven, is because they don't crisp up all the way through. So we've got some pieces that are a little softer. 
We've got some pieces that are a little bigger. So, so fun. Now, here's the fun part. Well, it's all fun. We're having a great time, aren't you? <laughs> I am going to take a little bit of fresh parsley, yay. And I'm going to chop this up super, super fine. We are taking this gorgeous chopped parsley and we are going to add it to our little breadies. And we're gonna grate some fresh Parmesan right into here. I'm gonna use a good amount because I love fresh Parmesan. Guys, we're gonna mix this up. We now have Parmesan herbed crouton breadcrumbs, whatever you wanna call them, but they are, they are fresh, they are herby, they're a little cheesy, they're salty, they're crunchy, they're delicious. I'm gonna take these little ice cubes out if I can find them. Just another nice rinse. Now our lettuce is gorgeous and green and crispy. And you guys, here's the gag. We are going to not worry too much if every single droplet of water has been cleaned off of this lettuce because having some water in here is actually going to help our dressing adhere to the lettuce itself. So it's no problem if you're like, oh my God, it's not dry enough. You'll be fine. I'm going to come back when we have everything ready to assemble. Our chicken is done and everything is clean. Which might take a while. <laughs> See you in a bit. Here is our absolutely gorgeous chicken. She is ready to be cut, but I believe that this was in here for about 30 minutes. And then I actually put the broiler on for like four minutes. But I, no matter what, when, especially when it comes to chicken, my friends, you want to check the internal temperature. If it is below 165 degrees and with chicken, I am crazy. I always just make sure it's over 170. If it's below 165 degrees, you're, it's not ready. Don't even try it, don't test it. Maybe that's me being overly cautious. I know it just needs to be 165, but I, I am nervous. Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this gorgeously seasoned chicken? Ah, just look at the inside with me. Look at the inside with me. Look at the inside, come here. Come here. Are, could you, sorry, excuse me. Could you focus please? My face is not important right now. You guys know I like my chicken very, very bite-sized because when I'm eating a salad, I don't think it should exist if you can't have all, like a little bit of everything on one fork. So I'm just cutting this into little strips and then across into little cubes. We're going to pull out our dressing. We uh, let our nice ice cold lettuce chill out. Gonna put a, just a bunch in there. Probably all of it, yeah, okay. Just real quick first, I like to give my lettuce a coat just to make sure every piece of lettuce has some dressing on it. Okay, oh my God, are you serious? Stop that, oh my God. <laughs> you guys, I'm very excited, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Just get into it, mama. Look at her. <gasps> okay. Now I'm going to mix it up because I like my salads mixed. And because we've cut everything and everything is nice and coatable and easy to put on a fork, we're gonna get a bite of everything. Okay, look at that. Look at that perfect mini salad on a fork. Mmm. I absolutely see myself eating that whole thing on camera, so I'm gonna stop myself right now. This is the best Caesar salad you are ever going to make at home, I promise you. You don't have to worry about emulsifying your own ingredients. You don't have to worry about having something in there that you don't like, but it's such a great base recipe. My dad actually would have loved this so much. He loved a good salad, so shout out to Frank. And another reason it's great is you could get everything prepared. Have your chicken, have your romaine, have your dressing, have your breadcrumbs, have them all separate. Keep them in the fridge for a couple days. Make the salad as you go. If you don't want a whole lunch size salad, just make a tiny little bit of it. I just advise not putting it all together and then trying to save it. The breadcrumbs can get kind of soggy. I hope you guys make the Caesar salad. And if you do make it, please let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. Send me photos on Instagram, send me photos on Twitter. And if you guys like this video and you would like to keep watching, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe down below. Oh my God, I can't wait to go finish this. Okay, I love you, bye-bye.